What is going on guys, my name is Nostalgia, or Kit, and in this video, I'm bringing you guys a big one. It is 10 reasons why MW3 is not only my favorite COD, but also the best COD ever released. So I'm going to be doing my best to record this all in one take. I've kind of done some research, compiled some stuff, but it's not necessarily a final revision. I might even make uh, videos on each of the 10 topics that I cover, but I want to let you guys know, jumping in here, uh, what my 10 favorite things are about MW3, and why each of those things is unique for MW3. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into number 10 right here, and that is Elite Clans. So Elite Clans was basically a new system after Black Ops 1 that integrated like a COD Online system into the game where you could find clans, um, do challenges, and it kind of also integrated the DLC system. Uh, there was like a free version, then also if you had um, like I guess the DLC season pass, then that worked alongside Elite, but um, Elite Clans was awesome because you could find a group of players that played just like you, so if you're interested in going for Moabs, you could find a group of people that were going for Moabs. If you wanted to go exclusively for Domination Wins, you could find a group that played just like that. It was really fun, and you also got this like clan tag that went along with your clan that was yellow and distinct that you could show off in-game. As well as the clan tags, there was also titles. Um, that you could customize so you could say whatever as long as it was appropriate and then uh, there's also elite emblems which weren't as customizable as the titles that you could you know put your own text or whatever on but um, as far as the titles goes it was really cool because as your clan ranked up and leveled up and did different like clan challenges and events and things like that um, you would go up and level and so there were certain like backgrounds that were unlocked and I don't remember if it was the gorilla smoking a cigar or the like cool kind of futuristic horse looking thing um, but there was one that was at the top that was always really cool and that meant your clan reached level 50 I believe and it was just a really cool system to encourage you guys playing together um, and doing fun stuff as a team. Here at number 9 we have the veteran status and what I mean by that is COD MW3 introduced a new system where it would show the previous ranks you held and the last four CODs. So that's COD 4, World at War, MW2, and Black Ops 1, where it would show either your rank within the first prestige, or your prestige rank after it. So if you were a no prestige in COD 4, it would show like level 15 or whatever level you were, but if you were a prestige 5 in World at War, it would show that prestige 5 emblem. I thought this system was really cool because it showed which of the players were veterans and had played and grinded the previous games, and also it showed trends in what the play player likes to do. Like if somebody likes Prestige 1 and they have Prestige 1 across those free previous four CODs, it, it would just give a unique possibility for you to customize your experience on the game. At number 8 we have the Elite DLC system. So we talked a little bit about Elite Clans, but this Elite DLC system was more of like a drip feed content system that always kept the game fresh. So of course there were DLC packages that you could get, like DLC pack 1, 2, 3 had like all the spec ops stuff, and 4. Um, but if you were an elite season pass member, um, you would get kind of like a drip feed of content, and it seemed like almost weekly or every other week. Um, I'm not entirely sure because I was a free player back then, or I just paid the price of the disc. Um, but I know that the elite system in MW3 was very, very well looked upon, and a lot of people hope for its return and I think what we do now with the current Call of Duties is actually a little bit similar to the Elite system but uh, yes a lot of people say great stuff about the Elite DLC system in Modern Warfare 3. At number 7 we have the 1v1, 2v2, and 3v3 also known as the Face Off playlist. The system dropped with two free maps for those players that didn't have the Season Pass content so those were Erosion and Aground. And then the players that did have DLC, I believe they had four or five more. There were some really cool ones like Vortex and U-Turn. But the face-off system was really cool because when you're talking smack with somebody in the lobby, you can come out and say, let's do a 1v1. Um, and you didn't have to just limit that to a private match on something like Ro Rust, excuse me, I almost said Roast, uh, or Dome. You could do that on a public matchmaking, you know, common rules, this is this is do or die. And that was really cool. It added the presence and the rules of standard matchmaking while also giving you an opportunity to challenge rivals, which I thought was really fun. At number 6 we have Variety, which Modern Warfare 3 is probably the king of in my opinion. It launched with 16 maps and it had a plethora of weapons for you to use. And while there wasn't DLC weapons, there wasn't really a need for them because there were so many options. Or you can just use the ACR every time. Um, but speaking of ARs, can you believe there were 10 ARs in this game? Just goes to show how much attention to detail uh, that they had to put into this game to have 10 ARs when the game launched. 
At number five, we have community playlists, and this is one of my favorite things. I used to almost exclusively play a community playlist, including MITD and Infected. Community playlists were a great chance for the community to vote on what they wanted to play. They were able to throw out different ideas, like MITD is a variation of the game mode Sabotage, where the carrier has a juggernaut suit, and it made for some really fun and unique experiences. Um, I know a lot of people still play Infected to this day and say it's the best that Call of Duty has ever seen, and this was the first version of it. At number 4, going along the variety topic, Modern Warfare 3 was the first to introduce strike packages, which allowed you guys to not only choose a specific set of killstreaks within a class, but it also gave you three different ways to play. So you could have your traditional assault, which was based on the point streak system, and that was new for Modern Warfare 3 as well. Um, so instead of getting a kill streak, um, you could get a kill streak, but also if you shot down things in the air or you captured an objective or anything like that, it all counted towards that point streak. So that was great for assault. Support added the unique opportunity for you to keep your kill streaks after you died, and while it was controversial, it did add a lot of options for players that weren't as good at, this, at the game. And then the third option, which was never seen before, was the ability to trade in your kill streaks for perks with specialist bonus. Modern Warfare 3 has such great variety, and seeing these three strike packages just shows you how much they actually had to account for before the game launched. At number 3 we have Spec Ops. Now Spec Ops is cool in a lot of different ways. In Modern Warfare 2 there was Spec Ops, but there wasn't really a reward outside of just the completionist for doing all the missions. There wasn't really like a call sign that you could get uh, to show off the fact that you had completed everything. Well Modern Warfare 3 added that with the Overachiever title, which added kind of a new layer of excitement or reward for doing those missions, but Spec Ops specifically added two new modes, which are the Chaos Mode, that was the DLC mode that came a little bit later on, but it launched with Survival Mode as well, um, which is a staple of Spec Ops now. Speaking of call signs, if you got round 15 on all 16 of the maps, you got this unique title called Unstoppable, and uh, that was one of the more cool ones that people would run in the game, because getting to 15 and some of the earlier ones was easy, but when you got to the bottom four levels, it was very difficult to get to round 15. Overall, Spec Ops brought a really cool new way to play Modern Warfare 3, and even as the Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer struggles, there's still an alive Spec Ops community, and there's high round attempts all the time. At number 2, we're going back to the topic of Specialist Bonus, which was a dream of older CODs. The ability to trade your killstreaks for perks was a dream come true for a lot of people, and it let people experience the excitement of having every single perk rolled into one package. On top of the perks, Modern Warfare 3 was unique in the fact that it had proficiencies that were relative to the weapon class you were using. If you were using a sniper or an LMG, you had speed to help you go faster, but when you got specialist bonus with an SMG or an AR, that speed proficiency was added onto your class, which made you even more powerful. Now of course there were some proficiencies that would be deemed overpowered in this scenario, like damage on an assault rifle, so those got left out, but for the most part, those proficiencies were added to your class when you did get specialist bonus. Specialist bonus is one of my favorite things about the game, and it keeps me coming back even in 2021. And at number one, I'm sure a lot of you guys could have guessed it, it's the Moab. The Moab, which is a 25 point streak, is an adaptation of the nuke, but it's just better. When you call it in, you EMP the entire enemy team for 60 seconds, your team gets double XP for the rest of the game, there's this really cool red haze that stays on the map for the rest of the game, letting everybody know you did the hardest accomplishment in this entire game. And as I just hinted, the game does go on, unlike the nuke, which ends it right there when you call it in. The ability to call in multiple nukes yourself or share that experience with friends with a bro ab is something super special and that's one of the reasons that Modern Warfare 3 is really fun to play with with friends is because everybody can enjoy the success. So that is going to be it for my top 10 list. I might have got some of those things out of order in uh, terms of importance where you see them, uh, but that was just kind of a quick rundown of 10 awesome things about Modern Warfare 3 and why it is, in my opinion, the best COD that has ever been released. So thank you guys so much for making it this far within the video. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, if you did, please leave me a like or a subscription, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.